Much like a cinematic installment from year to year, Star Wars games have just been an inevitability on every gaming platform known to Wookiee. Sure, since the dark lord of video games, EA took over the rights in the post Lucas era, we've all but seen a couple of cancellations, some phone games, and an embarrassing return from Battlefront. I can almost imagine Activision is Palpatine in this scenario, and has a fleet on the other side of Disney just waiting for EA to f*** it up so badly that they can swoop in and grab the license. Much like they juggled the Bond one back in the day. In this Star Wars game drought and solo a Star Wars story only a capsule run away, it might be time to check out some older releases to get us through this drought. So let's let Qui-Gons be Qui-Gons. I'm Ben Murray from WhatCulture.com and this is 10 underrated Star Wars games that you probably missed. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 10. Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. Putting the N64 to its limits and being more than just a competent racer is really all this title needed. This game felt so darn fast, like it was taking a page out of F Zero's playbook, and even remained challenging after players learnt their way around every course. It was between this and Racer's Revenge for the top spot, but if developers can take one of Episode 1's most despised scenes and turn it into a fun sequence, then there's hope for Senate Discussion Simulator 2018 yet. So take a gander at this retro racer and give it some love. Now, this is Pod Racer. In. Number 9. Star Wars Demolition The car combat video game genre had a short lifespan in the late 90s to early 2000s, but in a short window of course LucasArts cashed in and added their own take with a Star Wars skin. Its controls were clunky and in some cases characters were just unbalanced with Boba Fett and the stamp running circles around the Rancor or the battle tank, but if you were taking this romp seriously then Demolition wasn't the game for you. In hindsight this was a rather lazy effort at the time, but doesn't nearly deserve as much hate as it got. Back when Lucas was given away the rights to experience Expand his galaxy in books and any old video game, Demolition actually had some charm to it. The fate of the galaxy wasn't on the line, the main cast of all four films at this point in time were all but absent, and there were some cool ideas trying to tie in Trade Federation tech some almost 40 years later with a crazy general or that grey Wookiee. In the end it was no more than just hitting a few action figures together for the pleasure of old Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> Number 8. Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith Sure this might be one whole entire list of movie tie-ins, kinda, but Revenge Revenge of the Sith is the only true movie game on here. Overlooked at the time in part to the fact that a little title called Lego Star Wars came out, we hadn't had a fully fledged movie game to accompany a release since 1999's The Phantom Menace. And yes, there was Attack of the Clones on GBA, but it's nothing to shake a saber at. There was a huge focus on lightsaber combat this time around, and a push for a redemption arc in the game franchise much like there was in the film. This is the closest we come to a Street Fighter style like Star Wars fighting game in the franchise, pitting the cast of Episode 3 against each other in one on one duels but just remember don't mess with old Ben Kenobi, he has the high ground. And as we thought this might be the last Star Wars, it couldn't help getting one last taste. Number 7. Star Wars Empire at War Empire at War came after Galactic Battlegrounds and injected a much needed graphical boost to the Star Wars RTS effort, focusing this time solely on the Galactic Civil War with campaigns from both the Rebel and the Imperial perspective, leading to the construction of the Death Star 2. Where the game stands out is Galactic Conquest, a popular concept which has shown up in a few other Star Wars titles such as Battlefront on PS2, and allows for a more strategic detection, much like chess in space. This is a mode ultimately replayable with no two conquests ending up the same. So construct a fleet of AT-ATs, march them towards Echo Base, because what else would a Star Wars RTS fan want? Number 6. Star Wars Republic Commando If first person squad based tactical shooters are your jam, then look no further. Taking place as the Battle of Geonosis happens, somewhere, um, over there, maybe back that way? God, games never really took advantage of that scene in Episode 2. Why not just let us play as 100 Jedi versus thousands of droids, Damn it. The Elder Squad were a crack team, bred to folly the efforts of the Separatist movement, taking more of an adult tone with piles of corpses, littering levels, or just straight up brutal knife murder. Left Commando feeling like more of an apocalypse now for Star Wars. Then there's that heavy Rainbow Six influence. LucasArts recruited former special forces to assist with motion capture and how some battle scenarios should take place. Each of the squad members, Scorch, Fixer and Sev really carry the campaign, as they could have easily been another soulless trooper, much like the rest of the clone army. Number 5. Star Wars Jedi Starfighter Sequel to Star Starfighter, a game that took place during the events of Episode 1, but from a distance. Jedi Starfighter takes this formula, perfecting it to the best of its abilities. Once again from the perspective of Nim, and now series newcomer Adigalia, in a variety of mission scenarios, battling in space, on the surface of worlds, and cooperative with a buddy if you wish. The big push this time around was focused on force powers, whilst piloting the slick new Jedi Starfighter featured in a 
attack at the clones. These slight innovations made for more engaging Star Wars dogfighting combat. Sometimes that's all you need from a game, to just do one thing right. Not everything has to be open world or multiplayer centric. Much like many Star Wars titles here, this is simply a B game, elevated by the brand, and not too dissimilar to that of Nintendo's Mario franchise. In a way that trying new things, but with the safety blanket of Star Wars, ensuring that sales won't bomb too hard. And publishers like EA should use this license to go down new avenues, and not just make every game multiplayer or open world. Number 4. Star Wars Episode 1 Jedi Power Battles Now when one thinks of a kyber crystal in the rough, you can't look much further than power battles. One year removed from the Phantom Menace, and the masses were firmly against this film, it all seemed like the Star Wars magic was lost, especially with the clunky and frankly hard to make out movie tie-in just a year previous. Enter power battles, and why stick firmly to what happened on screen? Why leave Mace Windu, Plo Koon, or Adi Gali at the cancel? And you know what? While we're at it, throw out the cannon completely and just give them whatever colour lightsaber they desire. Players now find themselves sticking to one character, upgrading their force abilities and combos, much like a Streets of Rage, but with a little more depth. Because you'll need all the moves possible to wipe out a droid army, some bugs, and... Jawas? Jump into battle tanks and on stamps. No, not the one with the Queen's face on. As hilarious as that would be. This title will surely require a PS1 memory card, as you'll be dying a lot. But just have no fear, because two Jedi can take the journey together. But remember not to run too far off screen, because your other friend will just end up in a pit. Number 3. Star Wars Bounty Hunter Sometimes lightsabers can get old, but only sometimes. So what do you do in the Star Wars universe when being a Jedi is out? Maybe grab a jetpack, two blaster pistols, and get bounty hunting. Bounty hunting gives fans that Mandalorian film they always wanted. And yes, whilst not actually being able to choose from bother, Jango is just as cool too. This game stood out at the time, because of the verticality Jango's jetpack allowed. So much more was available to explore, whilst introducing fun combat scenarios. Throughout the story, Jango might be undertaking a shady mission from Count Dooku, but he's not against earning a quick buck on the side. So acting like collectibles, some NPCs will have a bounty on their head, for dead or alive. This in turn just meant players would scan everything and everyone in existence, obsessively. Bounty Hunter is now a PS2 classic on PS4, so maybe go and give that some love. But do you know what really would be handy? Bounty Hunter 2, where Boba Fett is maybe the protagonist, and not cancelled like a little game called 1313. Number 2. Star Wars Trilogy Arcade Okay, hands up if you missed this one. I'm certain a fair amount might, because unless you left the house for anything other than a cup of sugar, this 1998 classic probably passed you by. For Star Wars Arcade Trilogy, leaving the house was a must. Going to an arcade, or stumbling into a cabinet at a dingy service station, next to the toilets just after the KFC. Treading well-worn events of the original trilogy, from the trench run to the Battle of Hoth, which is a way of passage for all Star Wars games, let's be honest, and the climactic events above or on the forest moon of Endor. Although this might be designed to collect your pound coins, Arcade Trilogy is true arcade action at its finest, with genuinely testing sections on foot against an ATS and innovative first-person lightsaber action against Boba Fett or Darth Vader, complete with that soundtrack and all those beloved sound effects. Just a complete Star Wars package, and deserves a home release to get into more people's hands. Number 1. Star Wars Battlefront 2 2017 <laughs> I mean, number 1. Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast If there's one thing I've learned from Star Wars games in the past, it's just the franchise can be morphed or bent to fit in any space. Whether it's any of the previous games on this list, from a racing to an arcade shooter to maybe an MMO, there's always a place for Star Wars and video games, even if it's some crappy phone game or Yoda stories. But where Star Wars shines brightest is when Star Wars is doing nothing else but being Star Wars. Jedi Outcast follows the continuing adventures of Karl Katarn who relinquished his powers whilst also being a former Imperial officer. That's quite a resume. Now a mercenary running missions for Mon Mothma, he crosses path with a dark Jedi called Dasan, and by accident, you know, leads him to the Valley of the Jedi, which will end badly of course. From there players meet Luke and Karl slowly recovers his force powers, which actually adds for a nice difficulty curve in the game. Visiting a variety of worlds, Outcast allows players to take the game and do it how they wish, whether you like to take the combat from a third or first person perspective, feeling simple and just want to blast a few fools, or blast those banter poodoos with an E11, or feeling like an accomplished swordsman, then slice them up with your saber, or finally feeling one with a force, push throw or choke them, as kinky as that sounds. Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast is one of the most complete Star Wars action adventure games ever made, only really rivaled by Jedi Academy, which might contain more gameplay mechanics and force abilities, but lack in the story. So if you're suffering from a Star Wars game in drought right now, pick up this stellar title. And until next time, may the force, I mean, no more games. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Don't forget to subscribe below and also the people who made this video, they're right here. So go and follow them and give them some love. If you want to see more content, there's probably some stuff flowing up above my head. Why not check it out? It could be fun. I'm not your dad.